We're in Kentucky. We're in Mammoth Cave National Park. But we're at a thousand trails. As far as I know, it's the only thousand trails in a national park. What do you think? I don't know. I never looked it up. <laughs> what do you think? If it is or isn't, let me know. Let us know in the comments below. But we're at Historic Diamond Caverns, which was discovered in 1859 and rediscovered daily. So when you get to Historic Diamond Caverns, you're going to come over here to check in. Looks like a little gas station. And you see the huge building here. Don't go to the huge building. Check-in is right here. The campground's actually across the street. So we're going to simulate checking in. We're you're going to pull straight ahead where it says RV parking only, and we're going to park. So as we pull straight ahead. One thing you need to do when you do that, you pull straight ahead and you stop, and then you get your camera out and you take a picture of the sign. This is actually Diamond Caverns Golf Resort. Straight ahead is the National Cave Museum and Library, or library, or library, however you want to say it. Not exactly sure what this building here on the right is. This Diamond Caverns. Go to Diamond Caverns. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Your gift shop and all that. This has been closed though since we've been here all weekend, yeah. so I don't know. It's Fourth of July weekend, so maybe it's closed Fourth of July weekend. And it looks like a nice trail there. Yeah. Lots of trails, obviously. Um, you're not going to get any drone footage here because, like I said, this is in the National Park. And when I say it's in the National Park, it's, if you look at it on a map that shows you where you can and can't fly a drone, it shows Mammoth Cave north of here and then there's a little tiny sliver that goes straight down to diamond caverns <laughs> so, so no drones but easy enough bring your golf clubs because like i said this is a golf resort they're going to be hanging right here on rv park drive now using co-pilot app for navigation it took us to a weird place i ignored it um it took us about a mile up the road um and i just followed google all the way in here and that that was fine so always verify trust but verify yeah your directions this is also a unique thousand trails property in that there's no gate at all it's just open to the wild. It's kind of off the road though. Nobody really knows it's back here unless you yeah. know it's back here. And you want to follow the paved road. Don't go straight, you know, up to the right here. You want to keep on the paved road. We actually did get escorted to a site. They they gave us a choice of a few sites. So that was cool, which is, we've seen that in a, in a couple of thousand trails. Friendly folks walking their dogs. There's the uh, mini golf course on the left. We're gonna get a close look at that right now. We got horseshoe pits, got a playground way over there. And check out this mini golf. This is one of the nicest mini golf courses I've seen at a thousand trails. Very well maintained. Yeah, it's showing its age, but it's still definitely playable. All right, how about that mini golf? Okay, here's the pavilion. They have church services every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. So you've got plenty of time to go to church and then get your rig ready to leave. They do a continental breakfast at 8.30. Lots of activities here. Activity boards here in the building on the right, as well as bathrooms and showers. Not quite time yet for that. We just passed the horseshoe pit, basketball courts, the playground swimming pools over on the far right we'll look get a close look at that in a second as well um, one of the reviews we read about this place was there's a lot of full-timers here permanent places and I don't know it's there's a few of these here that look like they haven't moved in years but for the most part they look like you know regular transient RVers oh uh, this Puma here definitely ain't going nowhere anytime soon um, but for the most part, they all look like they're you know, like you. Yeah, here for the weekend, week, couple weeks, whatever. There are a total of 68 campsites here. This is, like I said, this is 4th of July weekend. We actually booked this less than a week ago, right? Um, so, 
I think this is a permanent guy here because he's got like firewood for days. That might be the camp post. This one here too. <laughs> um, and we're going to show you our campsite here in a little while as well. And straight ahead, we're not going to go up to it, but we're going to go ahead and turn around here. Is, you know, another bath house facility. We're actually in a pull through spot here, which is cool. We had a level. Yeah, level, which is a very, very shocking actually um, to have a level spot here because we are in the mountains and the Elks Lodge that we just left was nowhere near level. There is no like this way only in this campground, right. so okay. it's kind of a free. Okay, I want you to stop right here. And I hope you, you can see up here on the left, you can kind of see in all this mess here. That was a dump station. Yeah. You imagine climbing the hill to go do, take the, the go do a dump? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, here's our RV on the right. Water here is actually pretty decent. Um, on the hardness scale, it was right in the middle. So definitely need an on-to-go water softener here. Obviously, these here are permanent. Now, once we get back here, that's where there's a mixture of um, every now and then there's like onesies and twosies for um, RV sites like here. It's kind of weird. But for the most part, back in this area, it's all permanent, you know, trailers. They do have cabins, two bedroom cabins here available for rent or if you're Thousand Trails contract includes that available for you know use. They are very particular though if you leave your RV and go somewhere you have to let them know and remove it from the site they will put you in a I don't know long-term storage or short-term storage kind of thing. They don't want people to just leave their RVs. Yeah you're not going to um, what do they call it um, ghost camp here because they will charge you 32 was it 32 32 dollars a day they will charge you and then i mean and the storage like if you had to use it for storage it really was reasonable like two dollars a day or something i mean they made it yeah. worth your while to move it here on the right is the tent camping area just a open field with wildflowers it's actually a line from a song charles clay one of my favorite bands um this is a pretty good spot here this this reflection has we got a nice shade tree and obviously walking distance to the pool let's go to the pool and potty and no this is not a scene from caddyshack we're not going to go potty in the pool probably so let's Let's do some pool potty, a potty and pool review. you have it there's the pool and there was the potty and the showers and the break area let's roll around to our site and give you some close-up looks at what's going on here now what can you do here in the mammoth cave area well go to mammoth cave they have tons of tours you need to book way 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 in advance 
um, the different tours. Highly recommend, honestly, all of them. Mammoth Cave is a really cool place. Um, also, while you're at it, if you haven't done so already and you want to help us help Christian-based veterans charities, take a look at the description below for the many different ways you can help us help Christian-based veterans charities all over the country. Um, there's Bowling Green, which is what? half an hour away about yeah, 35 minutes which is also home to the national corvette museum in western kentucky university among other things there's lost caverns which lost is river. lost river yeah lost river sorry which is cool that's fun you actually uh, it's a you um take a little um, boat into a cavern um not good for really tall people so um our good friends uh, Bill and Natasha nursing our travel bug. They pr Bill probably wouldn't um, do well there. He had to lay on the boat because uh, it, it gets it gets tight. <laughs> and there is the um, railroad museum. Yep, yeah, no, that's right. Forgot got the railroad museum. So we're gonna go ahead and turn into our site up here. Now we could have turned right there, which is the way you would turn to um, go in and park, but. It doesn't go all the way around, so we're kind of stuck if we did that. So, so we got to drive around this way so we can actually get out, <laughs> drive out. I would come back to this thousand trail. Yeah, it's really nice. We're only here for two nights. Um, wish you could stay more. Um, on the technology standpoint, did not deploy the Starlinks if we were only here for two nights. Um, so I don't, I can't speak for that. I didn't see any Starlink dishes out. So I don't know if it even works here. 5G T-Mobile, pretty decent. Okay, not really decent, okay. Um, Poor AT&T and uh, okay, Verizon slash Visible. They do offer paid Wi-Fi here, didn't check it out, didn't pay for it. But we are literally right in front of um, one of the antennas for that. So we probably would be have the best possible signal if we actually tried it. So let's go check out the site here and see what we got. So here we are at site 401, pretty level. Didn't need any blocks. All the sites have a picnic table uh, firing. As you can see, there's the other sites. Their water hookup, electric, sewer way up there. Yeah, same with so ours. 68 spots, a mixture of 30 amp, 50 amp, full hookup, no sewer hookups. So not all sites have sewers. So keep that in mind. And not all sites have 50 amps. Lots to do in the area if you like to be outside and do outdoorsy stuff like hikes, um, spelunking. Ooh, spelunking. Do you know what spelunking means? If not, look it up. Leave us in the comments below if you know what spelunking means. So thanks so much for watching. May your next journey be an epic adventure. See ya. Bye.